somehow, if the season ended today and our producer Malcolm did actually call the league to officially check the season does not actually end today, the New England Patriots would be in the postseason. That's gross. Yuck. New England's defense once again came up big in a victory over the Cardinals last night, but nobody wants to see the Patriots in the postseason because that offense is absolutely offensive. And look, you saw that play with DeAndre Hopkins carrying the football inexplicably for Arizona like a loaf of bread. The game was actually tied. It was late in the third quarter and easy scoop and score. And that that was the ball game. But don't let that cloud the big picture here. Mac Jones sticks. Even more, Matt Patricia is awful at his job. I mean, this was the easiest first guess in the history of first guesses. How in the world, if you're Bill Belichick, who is the greatest coach in the history of sports, how when Josh McDaniels leaves, do you put a former defensive coordinator, a failed head coach of the Detroit Lions, how do you put that guy in charge of your offense? The New England Patriots, you watch them play, you look at the numbers, they are repulsive on offense. I think Patricia just called five more screen passes you were, were listening to that I mean it is awful watching New England play and I don't believe because of Patricia and the offense holding the team back I don't think there's a chance the Patriots make it to the postseason she asked with my guy Justin Herbert and he was majestic in the Chargers gigantic win over the Miami Dolphins on Sunday night now, on the flip side of the conversation we were having with New England, we must have Justin Herbert in the postseason. I demand this as an NFL fan because I want to see Herbert rock and roll in the playoffs. I mean, the throws he was making. I mean, the throws to Mike Williams, the throws to Keenan Allen, the unbelievable accuracy on the run, the dimes, the frozen ropes. I mean, we're talking about Aaron Rodgers in his prime. I mean, look at the numbers on your screen here, okay? Justin Herberts is a star. Anyone who says anything else is reaching and wanting attention because they just have no life. What we're seeing from the Chargers is inspiring. And the bounce back, the way the defense played against the Miami Dolphins was excellent. So who do you trust when we look at the landscape of the AFC? What's 7-6 and six team? Give me the team with the quarterback. Give me Justin Herbert. And if that defense can play like that down the stretch, I'm going to tell you something right now. Chargers are going to run the table. They'll beat Tennessee. I know the run defense historically this year has been leaky, but Tennessee's hit a wall. They'll beat Indy. They'll beat the Rams. They'll beat Denver. I think the Patriots are going to lose three of the next four, and they might lose out the Josh McDaniels member me game. And listen, we don't know if Quentin Williams is going to be healthy. We don't know if Mike Effin White, as they like to call him, is going to be healthy. That schedule for the Jets is actually sneaky difficult. So I don't think the Jets, even with their amazing defense, I don't think they are going to make the postseason. So I believe when it's all said and done, as it has been, when we told you in March of 2020 that Justin Herbert was going to be a star, it's Justin Herbert's world. We're just living in it. And the Chargers behind their megastar quarterback will make a push and make the postseason. James Conner talking about Kyler Murray after the game last night. And now we know just how serious that knee injury is. As test today confirms what we all knew and saw 90 seconds into the game. That's a torn ACL for Kyler Murray. He is out for the season. And that is just devastating. When his knee buckled like that, non-contact, you knew. And Kyler Murray, a tremendous athlete. And to see him lying there and the face and the agony of every single player for the Arizona Cardinals, Cliff Kingsbury, the Patriots last night, that was tough. That was tough to watch. Now, I don't think that this is going to save Cliff Kingsbury's job. I think that when you look at it, Arizona National TV last night, another home loss. They are wretched in terms of playing games at home. 
Listen, the Arizona Cardinals have been a mess this season, and things just got even uglier with the loss last night and the sobering news that Kyler Murray, their franchise quarterback, torn ACL, done for the season. The college football community is mourning the shocking loss of a coaching stalwart today. Mike Leach, the Mississippi State head coach since 2020, died Monday nights of complications from a heart condition. In a school statement, Leach's family thanked the public for its outpouring of love and support. Mike Leach, a larger-than-life figure, he would always speak his mind. The air raid offense, whether it was talking about Gardner Minshew's mustache or candy corn or the college football playoffs, every single time Mike Leach talked to the press, it was always different and, frankly, refreshing. 158 and 107 at three different schools. He was an offensive mind that really was second to none. And you look at how he was light years ahead of the curve in terms of being an innovator and now how the offense is copied all throughout college football and, frankly, the pros. Mike Leach, just an absolute gem. I really think that Mike Leach, his style was just incredible. He worked with us at Sirius XM for a couple of years in between coaching stints in 2010 and 2011. He always made you feel when you talked to him like you were the most important person in the world. He was great with kids, very generous with his time. There will be never be another Mike Leach, just a, a wonderful, wonderful person, an excellent, excellent coach. Mike Leach was 61 years old. Welcome back. Time to shine. A lot of great sales get off my chest on a Tuesday. Of course, my guy Brock Purdy can win the NFC. Another pretty great performance from the San Francisco quarterback as the Niners are rolling. And I told you last week on Time to Shine that they were going to keep on keeping on and bludgeon the Buccaneers, and Purdy was going to be great, and you saw him right there with the celebration. I mean, listen, the guy's ridiculously confident. Watch him play, talk to his teammates, listen to the Trent Williams quotes. I mean, look at that. Two games against two solid teams, he's completing 71% of his passes. I mean, Brock Purdy is Jimmy Garoppolo, only better. And you look at the remaining schedule, I believe Brock Purdy and the Niners are going to run the table. They're going to beat the Seahawks on Thursday. I can't wait for that game against Washington on CBS. They'll beat the Raiders. They'll beat the Arizona Cardinals. And here's the deal when it comes to Brock Purdy. They have unbelievable talent around them. There's good news on the Debo Samuel injury front. It's not a high ankle sprain. Looked bad over the weekend. Debo is going to be back according to multiple reports, at the end of the regular season. He'll be available for the postseason. So as long as you get Debo back, and you saw Brock Purdy dropping dimes, the Brandon Ayuk touchdown we just showed, the one to Christian McCaffrey was unbelievable. The offensive line is incredible. This defense, we told you all offseason, all season, it's special. D'Amico Ryans, he's going to be a head coach in the NFL, should have been one this past offseason. Nick Bosa, top two for the defensive player of the year. Greenlaw, Warner, the DBs are all excellent. Brock Purdy's in an unbelievable situation where he has, for a rookie, for Mr. Irrelevant, unique talent and coaching that is extra special around him. He just needs to make the possible possible. He just needs to keep on being a team leader. He's better than anything we've seen from Trey Lance. It's crazy but true. He's as good or better than anything we've seen from Jimmy Garoppolo. Just keep the train on the tracks. And yes, Brock Purdy can hoist the Lombardi Trophy. What a time to be alive. Got to get this off my chest. The Dallas Cowboys need Dak Prescott to be a whole lot better. When you look at what transpired over the weekend, now the league doesn't make you give back wins, but the Dallas Cowboys were lucky. They were atrocious. And Dak Prescott was frankly awful, which is not a surprise, even though I was stunned that it was even a close game that should have lost against the lowly, pathetic, embarrassing Houston Texans. You realize Dak Prescott is tied for the league lead with eight picks since he's been back? 
And these nuggets of utility watching the game, the gross interception late in the fourth quarter. If Houston had any idea what they were doing at the goal line or at the quarterback position, they would have lost. Now, I'm not going to hot take it from a Dallas perspective because I still think they could learn something from the Texans near debacle. I still think that they can beat Philadelphia on Christmas Eve, week number 16. I still think they can run the table, and I think T.Y. Hilton signing him is a big part of that. Seriously, I love this signing. T.Y. Hilton, solid player. He used to be great, and he's the epitome of class. You see the C on his chest. His teammates love him. What well, hasn't been on a team on a roster this year, which was surprising. You know, this is a guy who's been over 1,000 yards receiving five different times in his career. Another season over 900 yards. Another season over 800. Look, if you asked me last week, T.Y. Hilton or Odell Beckham Jr., I would have said T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, there's no ego. Epitome of class. I bet you as soon as he's active, he will be able to make plays for Dak Prescott. I, I think the offensive line, even with injuries, still great. Pollard and Zeke, great. C.D. Lamb, still great. Defense, still great. It's about Dak Prescott and Kellen Moore. And I still put the Cowboys in the same category with Philadelphia and San Francisco. Obviously third on the list. They need to get their heads out of their derrieres. And I still believe that they can be a factor this postseason, but Dak Prescott must play better. The Dallas Cowboys officially have a Dak Prescott problem. I gotta get this off my chest. What the hell is going on with Tua Tungavailoa? Seriously, this, this is a mess. And the Chargers defense is not any good. Tua Tungavailoa couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. I mean, three completions in the first half and 10 in the entire game. Last two weeks, he's under 50%. I mean, look, he's not even close. And don't let the final score fool you. I mean, you know, there was that flukish play with Tyree Kill and the fumble recovery and the one throw he made to Tyree Kill. I mean, these numbers on your screen, gross. And then you look at Miami's remaining schedule. They have no chance against Buffalo. Short week in Orchard Park, it's gonna be freezing. I mean, come on. By the way, Christmas Day against Aaron Rodgers. We told our friend Pat McAfee today that he's feeling pretty good. I think they'll beat the Patriots. I think they can beat the Jets. Remember, earlier in the year when the Jets beat Miami, Tua didn't play. But this is a bit of a mess. And in the past, historically, Tua's had some issues in terms of sagging confidence. And this is going to be a bloodbath in Buffalo. So keep an eye on the Miami Dolphins because I still think two is really good. Never put him in the same sentence as the likes of Justin Herbert. That was always crazy. Anyone who thought he was as good or better, that goes back to the 2020 draft and also, you know, watching football. I still think the Dolphins will make the playoffs, but the bloom is officially off the rose. I got to get this off my chest. The Detroit Lions are for real. We told you last week at this time on Time to Shine, if they beat Minnesota, they're going to run the table. They beat Minnesota up, and they are going to run the table. That catch by Williams, first catch in his career, was awesome. Jared Goff was flawless yet again. Threw three touchdowns. The receiving core is deep and talented. Offensive line is strong. Hutchinson has done a brilliant job on defense. Love Dan Campbell, and they are just cruising. They fixed the defense. So happy for Jared Goff. You can make the case that he's been the second best quarterback in the NFC this year. I mean, think about it. Jalen Hurts and Jared Goff. Lions are making the playoffs. Lions are better than Washington, better than the Giants, better than Seattle. If I'm doing a confidence ranking, I mean, I'd put the Lions fourth in the NFC right now. I had a Minnesota. We just saw it head to head. I firmly believe that Jared Goff is going to take care of business on CBS this weekend in New York against the Jets. Believe in the Detroit Lions. It's my favorite story in the NFL this season. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.